we were skirting some cliffs. Dude, I, I slipped. And I, like, no shit was falling. And I don't know how, dude, but I got picked up and put back on that rock. What? But my dad was Army. He was, uh, he was an MP in the Army. Uh, met my mom before I came around. I think he was on a deployment to Panama, uh, the country, not Panama City, guys and gals. Um, but they met, and then they came back and had me. And um, we were there for about two years before we picked up and went back to Panama. He took a deployment there, and I... That's when I could start remembering a couple things here and there, right? Like not much, but that was a cool um, experience in my life to live in a tropic area, to meet my mom's family. Like I don't remember much, it's hazy, but I remember enough to know like, okay, I'm a little different than everybody else, you know, in the sense that we're on the outskirts of the jungle, essentially where my mom lives, there's no power. Her family was out there, she was one of seven. So your mom's Panamanian? She's Panamanian. What yeah. time frame did they meet? They met in uh, this like the, the 70s, days? yeah, the no 70s, kidding. yeah. Right on. Yeah, and then I came shortly after. <laughs> so, yeah. you, so you <laughs> lived in Panama too? I did, yeah. And I didn't go back for a long time. I know we're jumping around here, but I went back when I was in high school. That was, there was a couple, I mean, it was a cool experience, but I wanted to get back to my girlfriend, so I left early. But nevertheless, it was cool to see my uncles and my aunts. And I mean, just think, no power. There's no hot water where my mom, my mom's family. Like we're out there on the on the in the sticks, and I'm playing with this pig with my little sister. We don't speak Spanish, uh, so everybody's you know I'm drinking beers with my uncles at like 13 because no big deal. And we're playing with this pig, and um, next thing I know, my uncle comes out with a pistol and shoots it right in the head. And they start chopping this thing up and they throw it in a cauldron. <laughs> I thought this was a pet pig. Oh my <laughs> That's dinner. <God. laughs> that was the first time. I was right like, in front of you? Yeah, my sister was five years younger than me. She was like six. She started crying. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Holy shit. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. But, Damn. But that's where, that's the early days. That was, you know, my, my folks took me there for a few years. And there's some interesting, there's like one early memory that just still I sit with from Panama. Um, and after that, we went to Maine. But... It was a weird, my first vivid memory was uh, we were, and I don't know how this fits in, maybe the spiritual stuff that we got into in plant medicine later, but I believe I should have died when I was a kid. We were all on some cliffs. My dad was, we were skirting some cliffs. Uh, and there was an outcrop uh, over the ocean in Panama. And um, dude, I, I slipped and I like, no shit was falling. I'm not, like, this is the clearest memory. I can still see it today. And I don't know how, dude, but, like, I got picked up and put back on that rock. What? I was young. I remember it clear as day, dude. Let's I just was go gone. through that whole experience. Well, so you... We were at the beach, and there was, where we were at, there was some jagged rocks and cliffs, and so we just went out there, and what I remember, and it's still, like, I mean, it's pretty clear for the most part but I remember my dad and we're just like kind of walking through the cliffs and nothing too sketchy we're just kind of going around it and pretty high up and I just slip and I start going backwards and um they talk about you get a flash you know like right before death like there's a flash people that have near-death experiences they, they witness this flash and there's like this ecstasy and some say it's close to one of the plant medicines, 5-MeO, gives you this similar experience. There's been some research out of Michigan on it, but I saw that flash, and I didn't know what it was. I, but the next thing I know, I was back on that rock. And my dad was just kind of scooting along, didn't even notice it, and I just didn't think anything of it. I was just a kid. I was like, well, let's just keep going with my dad and kind of mention it to him. But, I mean, in his head, that's not logical, right? Like, he probably just thought, oh, you almost slipped, got it. Like, you fell a little bit, picked yourself up. But I was off that cliff, man. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, I don't know, divine intervention, God, higher power. That was my first experience with it. What do you believe in? Are you a Christian? I believe in God. Spiritual? Yeah. So I grew up Catholic, and I lost my faith in the teams, mm -hmm. if I'm being honest. Um, and my mom's from Panama, so when I mean like devout oh, yeah. 
Christian Catholic. Like we were at church and I got dressed up. I had the suit and tie at like two. And But when I came into the teams, I was immature. And we'll get into all this, I imagine. Um, I just didn't know what was right, what was wrong, and quickly got lost in the in the mix, right? And I lost my faith. So what do you... Th- I believe in God. Where you're at today, what do you think that was on that cliff? I, I believe God picked me up and put me back on there because there's still more to be done. Wasn't your time. It wasn't my time. Man. I don't think anybody saw it. Wow. Just me. Wow. <clears throat> and try being like a little kid, three, four years old, telling that to your dad, right? Like your son right now. I mean, I know he's two, but hey, dad, I just was completely off this cliff and you're just like, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, no, come on. We got to get going. We got to go to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Man. Man. Yeah. Wow. So then you moved to Maine. Yeah. When did you, how old were you when you got to Maine? So I was five at the time and that's when my sister came along. Okay. So she's five years younger than me, uh, Jennifer, and she's tremendous. She's, uh, again, there's a lot of trauma in my life, self-induced, and um, she's a great, she's a great sister. I wasn't there for her, like, and we'll we'll touch on that. But love her to death. She came along. Back then, I did not love her, uh, and I was a kid, so I was. We, we had these marble fights. It was a one-way fight. I would just chuck marbles at my sister. I was a dick. <laughs> She has a scar to this day, beautiful woman, uh, but there's a scar, and she's quick to tell you how she got that scar. That was the old Johnny Wilson's uh, curveball. Um, but we lived in Bangor, Maine, and my dad took a recruiting gig there. And I remember a couple things about that area. It's cool. Stephen King lives there. That's our claim to fame in Bangor, Maine. That's about it. It snows a lot. So that was my first experience with snow coming from Texas and, and Panama. So... Um, no, no snow days in Maine, man. There'd be like five foot banks, ten foot banks. You're still going to school, man. Um, yeah, but it was great. There was a cool playground at the base of uh, Stephen King's house. So he had this huge gargoyle, like wrought iron fence mansion with steeples. It's exactly what you would think when you think a haunted house. That's his house. And you come down the hill, and at the base is this huge playground that. Uh, you know, Bangor had uh, the municipality or the um, the city had put money together and put this cool like playground. So that's what we did as kids. We just rolled at playground as a wooden pay- playground and hang out there and look up at Stephen King's place, thinking, "Geez, that's, that's something going on in there." It was like a murder. We all had these little stories as kids that we talk about because we knew he was the, the horror author, and I think it had come out and some other cool movies. So, oh man, man, yeah. So I was there till I was about ten, and then where'd you go? Then he took orders to um, to Holland. So we um, there's a base, like a multinational base there called Absent. And a um, bunch of folks from that area, uh, from Europe that get stationed there. So all walks of life, all different units. And he got stationed there. So we lived in the Netherlands for about f- four or five years. And that was a really cool experience for me, man. That's where a lot of people think I... They say I like nice things, I'm fancy, like I like going over to Europe. And it's like, that's where I got it from. Like my time in Europe was awesome. And I only wish I was older because, you know, I was just hitting my stride when we left 14. Started talking to some of the girls around there. I was like, oh, we've got some local girls. I got German girls, Netherlands girls, Belgium girls. I was like, this is heaven. And then <laughs> let's go to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. I was like, no. Um, but it was fun. It was a cool experience. Um living there the school was neat all different again ethnicities all different parts of the world so you know there wasn't too many americans there and i thought that was pretty cool got folks from france and other parts of the world so it was it was a really interesting chapter it sounds like there was a fight there oh yeah yeah there was that was so in yeah what year was that i was probably like 12 at the time no i was younger than that actually um so where my dad was stationed, and for, and I know you know this, but there's like military housing, right? So we had military housing there, and there were townhomes. And outside of our townhome just happened to be the playground, the park area. So we played soccer because you're in Europe. You don't play football. You play soccer. And we're out there playing soccer, and uh, there's some older, like, local kids that used to come in, and they were assholes. 
Um, and I had finally just, you know, I think I was getting a little courageous. Maybe, the, you know, the balls were dropping and I said something. I was on my back like that. This like, I was 12, maybe 10, 11, something like that. This kid was like 14, had me on my back and was just wailing on me. It was my first fight. <laughs> Damn. My first fight. And I just remember it was kind of surreal. I was just sitting there. I didn't know what to do. Like this guy had me pinned down. I couldn't move. I was trying to squirm and uh, older kid was just wailing and it didn't hurt. I think he was holding back or I don't know what, it was weird. Um, but I got my ass kicked. It's my first fight. So oh, and one out of the gates, not, not how anybody wants to start, but it's where I started like realizing like, dude, that sucked. You didn't like that. Change it. What can you do to change that outcome? What can you do? And that's where we got into like karate and jujitsu. But it was one of the first lessons learned in my life was just like, dude, that was miserable. That was embarrassing. There was a whole crowd. I mean, it was like the freaking movies. Like mm-hmm. there was a crowd around us chanting and I was just getting wailed on. I couldn't do anything about it. So change it. It was the biggest takeaway for me in my childhood. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.